Giannis and the Bucks have come up short of reaching the finals in four straight years coming into 2021, and the Nets with their big three fully intact are the current favorites over Milwaukee to come out of the East, but the Bucks took down Brooklyn twice in the final 10 games of the season, and this year is the first time Giannis has had two elite playmakers next to him on the perimeter. In this video, I'll show you how this team's built up a lethal rhythm and why they can be your pick to not only win the Eastern Conference, but to take home the Larry O'Brien trophy. Only 11% of you watching this video right now are subscribed, so if you're looking for consistent NBA hot takes, then you came to the right place. Whoever gets the top comment in response to my shout out question later on gets a free shooting sleeve courtesy of yours truly, and of course their take featured after next video's intro. Quick shout out to Christian Cruz for giving his takes on the playoffs. That bam at a bio take at the end isn't looking great, but appreciate the answer nonetheless. Stick around for today's question. We'll get to how the Bucks are getting vengeance against Jimmy Butler and the Heat in the first round. But first, let's delve into what makes this team so incredibly tough to beat. Milwaukee has one of the best big threes in basketball, along with having one of the best benches. The trio of Giannis Adetokounmpo, Chris Middleton, and Drew Holiday is the best defensive big three in the NBA. The Greek Freaks the reigning DPOI, Chris Middleton has received votes to make all defensive teams multiple times in his career, and according to stars like Kevin Durant, Damian Lillard, and countless other players, Drew Holiday is the best defender at the guard position. This big three is not only formidable defensively, but they're also overwhelming offensively. The combination of Holiday, Giannis, and Middleton average the most assists and rebounds of any three-man group in the NBA. Rounding out the starting five is Brooke Lopez and Dante DiVincenzo. DiVincenzo's taken a sizable leap coming into his third season. Last year, DiVincenzo shot a below average 33.6% from three-point range on under four attempts per game from out there. This year, Dante's risen his three-point percentage all the way up to 38% on a hefty 5.2 attempts. Also, Dante's developed into one of the better hustle players around the NBA, and that's reflected in his net rating. Among NBA players playing at least 25 minutes per game, the Villanova product ranks fourth among all players in that crucial advanced stat, so he's damn underrated. The last member of the starting five is the stretch big Brooke Lopez, who provides valuable spacing for Giannis. Lopez is also a powerful rim protector at the basket. The 13-year veteran made the 2020 All-Defensive second team, averaging over two blocks, helping to anchor one of the best defenses this league's seen in a very long time. Moving on to the bench unit, the Bucks have relied on several players for consistent help throughout the season that's been absent in previous playoff runs. The first player off the bench for the Bucks is Bobby Portis. Portis has been incredible this season off the bench, averaging 11.4 points and 7.2 rebounds per contest. Portis is also ranked fourth in the NBA in three-point percentage at a blazing 47%. To see this from a big man, especially off the bench, is unprecedented. Another incredible floor spacer from Milwaukee is former Spur Bryn Forbes. Forbes dropped 22 points in Game 2, but he's been splashing it from distance all season, ranking 7th in the NBA in 3-point percentage with 45% on 5 3-point attempts. Forbes has had massive games off the bench this season including a 30 bomb where he made six of his 10 three-pointers against Houston. The rest of the bench is rounded out nicely by players who fill out their own roles very well. Pat Connaughton is an all-around forward who plays whatever position his coach asks. P.J. Tucker is one of the most versatile defenders in the NBA and has led the association in corner threes for most of his career. Lastly, the Greek freak junior, Thanasis Adetokounmpo, is a great energy guy to come in for five minutes a game to re-energize the team. Just look at him hyping up Giannis after a big slam. Bucks team can turn it on at any minute, brother to brother, and he gets a dunk. After getting embarrassed in the conference semifinals last year to Jimmy Buckets and the eventual East champs in the Miami Heat, a lot of Bucks fans were quivering when they had to face the team again in this year's first round. Butler said he was stupidly locked in before this series. Giannis seemed indifferent about the Bucks' chances, and it seemed like the Heat's bubble beatdown could repeat itself. But as they just showed in Game 2, 
where they went up 46 to 20, an NBA playoff record for the biggest lead after one quarter, things are just a bit different this year. To go up 2-0, the Bucks set postseason franchise records in three-pointers made with 22 and points at the half as they had 78 points headed to the locker room. Giannis dropped 31 and 13 with Drew dishing out a career best 15 dimes, but that type of play wasn't established from thin air. Milwaukee was quietly developing a championship winning chemistry all season, they just never got any attention from the media. Giannis and the Bucks typically dominate the East as they finished first in the conference every year since 2018. This time around, however, the Bucks have taken a different approach. They've spent much of the regular season experimenting with several different crunch time lineups, as well as offensive and defensive sets, in order to figure out what'll work best for the playoffs. Due to this, the Bucks have not been their typically dominant regular season selves, as they finished below the Sixers and Nets as the number three seed in the East. When Giannis was asked if he was happy or not about gaining control of the number two seed last week, this was his response. Hell no, Giannis said emphatically. I don't care about second, like it does not matter. It does not matter. All that matters right now is building good habits, end quote. The Bucks have come to play in premier matchups against potential playoff opponents all season. The Bucks have a record of 5-1 against the top two seeds in the East in Brooklyn and Philly when they played the Miami Heat, who knocked them out in five games in the second round last season. The Bucks utterly eviscerated them in a near 50-point blowout, setting an NBA record for made threes in a single game way back on December 30th. Against every team that the Bucks may potentially face in the upcoming rounds, they've taken care of business easily. But if you need more reasons to know why to pick the Bucks to come out of the East, I'll lay them out for you. The Bucks are the best three-point shooting team in the East and the second best three-point shooting team in the entire NBA. Very few teams can brag about outgunning Milwaukee head-to-head. -head. The Bucks are also averaging the most points per game in the last 35 years steamrolling NBA defenses with their high-powered offense. When it comes to playing against the other two favorites in the conference, the Bucks match up well with them head-to-head. -head. Against Philly, the Bucks have more star power, more depth, and a much better offense. Against Brooklyn, the gap offensively isn't very large, but the defenses are miles apart. In matchups with the Nets this season, Giannis averages 40, 11, and 5. The Nets have no one to stop them, and this could go on for an entire playoff series. Not many teams have the unique combination of offense and defense to hang with Milwaukee in a seven-game series. The Bucks also have the best player in nearly every playoff series that they play in. Will this be enough to bring a championship back to Milwaukee for the first time in 50 years, though? There's questions of whether or not Giannis's lack of a three-point shot in an in-between game will cost the Bucks for a fifth year in a row but the evolution of the 26-year-old's passing could be the factor that makes up for his lack of a jumper. Adetokounmpo has become a much more efficient facilitator as he's averaging 41.7 passes made per game. That's the fewest total of the last three years, but his assist points created are at 16.7, which is the highest total of the last three years. Also, his teammates are shooting over 40% from three-point range off passes he makes, a 5% increase from 2019-20. The way Giannis is navigating past his matchup and then elusively dropping it off has been at the most elite level of his career by far. Along with his dime dropping, Adetokounmpo is making an insane 84% of his attempts from zero to three feet, nearly a 6% increase from any other season. But the main thing that no one is talking about with the Bucks is that before 2021, Giannis never had a playmaker next to him like Drew Holiday. He was forced to deal with the inconsistencies of Eric Bledsoe. When the defensive intensity reaches its peak like it has in the playoffs, you need every bit of all-star shot creation that you can get. And now next to Giannis, Milwaukee has another two top-notch offensive creators in Chris Cash, Money Middleton, and a top five point guard in Drew Holiday. It took Jordan seven years to win a ring. It took King James nine years. And now for one of the best players on earth in the Greek Freak. His eighth season gives him the best chance at taking home his first ring. Given the Bucks have built up a ton of momentum, 
as they won eight of their last nine games in the regular season, and also taking into account the Shaq-like dominance Giannis has been displaying, I'm predicting the Bucks go the distance this summer and win the franchise's first title in 50 years. But are the Bucks the title favorites in your opinion? Top answer gets a shout out next video and of course a shooting sleeve just like shooting sleeve Giannis. Follow me on Instagram at dflowhoops, you're the best for sticking around and I'll see you next video.